So hello and welcome to our lesson on interpolation and polynomial approximation. So I'm going to kind of off a final year student of mathematics KNUSD and I'll be taking you through this lesson. So let's take an introduction on what interpolation is about. So let's consider this scenario. So a census of the population of the United States is taken every 10 years. The following table lists the population in thousands of people from 1950 to 2000. And the data are also represented in the figure. So we are going to take this table, okay? So this table has the population of the United States from 1950 to 2000 with a 10 years interval. So in 1950, this was the population of those in the United States, 1960, 1970, 1980, 1990, 2000. Okay, so you can see that we have 10 years gap between each of these years. Okay, so in reviewing the, these data, we might ask whether they could be used to provide a reasonable estimate of the population say in 1975 or even in the year 2020. So predictions of this type can be obtained by using a function that fits the data and this process is called interpolation. So you could see that we have 1970, we have 1980, and we don't have 1975, but we will sometimes be interested in the population in 1975. And there are ways that we can do this, okay? And this is what we call interpolation. And for instance, we have 2000 here, and we want to estimate the population in 2020. So you can see that since 2020 falls outside the point we have here, we call this extrapolation. Okay, so extrapolation and interpolation. But what we'll be talking about will be interpolation. So that means that we'll be trying to solve questions like these okay so you could see we had the population of the people of the united states from 1950 to 2000 with 10 years gap between like we had 10 years interval so let's say 1950 1961 to know the population at 1958 how do we go about it so that's what we'll be doing okay So, we have two methods that we'll be discussing for doing this, but we have several of them. I will be discussing two of them, and they are the direct methods and the Lagrangian interpolation. Okay, but in this first video, we'll be discussing the direct method of interpolation, which is very simple if you get the concept on which it is based or the premise. So let's take the direct method of interpolation. So the direct method of interpolation is based on the following premise. So given n plus 1 data point, we fit a polynomial of order n as given below. Okay, so this is the general form. We have y equals a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared plus a n x n. So for instance, you could see that when we have two points, right, say a0 and a certain value for a0, let's say 
and we have a1 and f of a1 so you can see we have two points so we will fit a polynomial of order one so you can see, see it's giving n plus one data point we fit a polynomial of order what n so you can see that we had n plus one so we had two points here that means n is one so when you are fitting a polynomial to two points it will be of the first order i hope you get that yes x power one here and so on so that's a concept on which the direct method is based okay so don't worry if you don't really get it we are going to illustrate the direct method with several examples and at the end of the examples you realize that it is very simple okay so we have this data here so you can see it is time and velocity okay so this is our time and this is our velocity so when our time is zero our velocity is zero when the time is 10 the velocity is 227.04 when the time is 15 we have this to be our velocity and so on okay so the question says we are to determine the value of the velocity at time t equals 16 seconds so you can see that judging from this table we don't have the velocity when our time is 16 seconds here right so that means before we can find the velocity when the time is 16 seconds we have to use interpolation techniques so the question says determine the value of the velocity at time t equals 16 seconds using the direct method of interpolation and a first order polynomial okay then the question b says with the same question evaluate vt at t equals 16 seconds using a second order polynomial and we are going to do the same thing in the third question yes that will be using a third order polynomial okay all right so let's solve the question so you see the first question says we should use a first order polynomial okay so that means you're going to need one plus one point so a first order polynomial means that our n is equal to one and we always need what n plus one what point to do that i hope you get that okay so for the first order polynomial interpolation also called linear interpolation because you can see the highest power here also was one so the velocity is given by v of t equals a naught plus a one t so you can see that our general function is y equals a naught plus a one x right but we are finding for velocity so v of t equals a naught plus a one t okay so now we need two points but the two points we don't just select them we select two points which are very very close to 16 and also contain what 16 so it says since you'll be finding v of t when t equals 16 we need to use the two data points that are closest to what 16 and from the table they are 15 36 2.78 and 20 517.35 so you can see that from the table here so you can see that 16 will be contained within 15 and what 20 okay all right so what we do is that we know that since we are approximating using the first other polynomial then our velocity function will be given by a naught plus a one t so we take the first point that is 15 362.78 and we put it into this function 
right so you know this is v of what t and this is t so that means that when you put in the first point we'll get 362.78 will be equal to a naught plus wherever you find t we put what 15 there so plus 15 a1 and this is equation one then when we take the second point you know that one this is v of t and this is t so that one will give us 517.35 will be equal to a naught plus 20 a1 and this is equation two so now we have two equations we have two unknowns a naught and a1 All right so solving equation one and equation two simultaneously using any method that you know either the equipment rule gaussian elimination any method that you know you will have a naught to be negative 100.93 and a1 to be 30.914 so remember that our velocity was given by the function v of t is equal to a naught plus a1 t so now we can make substitution okay so we'll have v of t will be equal to minus 100.93 that is a naught plus 30.914 and our t lies between 15 to 20 if you could remember All right let me show you here if i've forgotten so you can see that the 16 lies between 15 and 20. those were the points we used okay so that means that we have this to be the velocity um function when we do the approximation by a first order polynomial so now we can find the velocity at time t equals 16 seconds so at time t equals 16 seconds we'll have v of 16 will be equal to so wherever you find t we put 16 there you can see that here and evaluating that will give us 393.69 meters per second okay so that's it when we approximate with a first order polynomial so now let's go to the second question. In the second question says now we should approximate it with a second order polynomial. So approximating it with a second order polynomial means we will need three points. That is A0, A1, and A2. Okay. And as a result of that, our VT will be given by A0 plus A1T plus A2T squared. I hope you get that. Hmm. So we have to select three points which are closest to 16 and contain 16 to do our interpolation with. And those three points are this, that, and that. Okay, so how will you know that these are the points closest to t equals 16, right? So let's go to our table. Okay, so you can see that we have 16. And we have 10, and we have 15, and we have 20. At least these, and we have 22.5. So these four points, 16 is within all of them. But you can see that when we are choosing, the first one we will choose is 15, because 15 is very close to what? 16. Oh. Please let me relaunch my Okay, so let's go back to our question. Okay, so as I was saying, then we have 22.5. So you can see that 15 is very close to 16. The difference is just 1. So we select this first. Then between 16 to 20, the difference is 4. We select this. Okay. Then between 16 and 10, the difference is what? 6. Then between 16 and 22.5, the difference is 6.5. So you can see 10 is closer to 16 than 22.5 so that means we'll select these points
those are the three points we'll select okay so we select these three points then remember that our velocity function is given by this so we're taking the first point right you know this is our t this is our v of t so we have 227.04 will be equal to a naught plus whenever you find t we put 10 there so 10 a1 then this is t squared so 10 squared a2 and that gives us equation one when you simplify then taking the second point we have 362.7 a to be equal to a naught plus 15 a1 plus 15 squared a2 simplifying gives us this then taking a third point when you put when you make substitution you get this which in turn gives us this equation so you can see that now we have um three equations right and we have three unknown so we have to solve this equation to get our a naught a1 and a2 so using any method that you know to solve this system of linear equations is going to give you a naught to be 12.05 a1 to be 17.733 and a2 to be 0 0.3766 so we put that into our vt which was equal to a naught plus a1 t plus a2 t squared and you can see that this is the interval 10 to 20 so at t equals 16 that means we come back to this wherever you find t we put 16 there okay so evaluating that will give us 392.19 meters per second so now let's go to the third one so with the third question we are supposed to um, use a third order polynomial okay so that means we need four points and our v2 will be of this form so the four point that we need are these okay right so you have to make substitution of all these four points into this to get four equations and you solve them simultaneously to get a naught a1 a2 a3 so when you do that you are going to get your v of t to be this and your v of 16 to be that okay so you can complete the steps we jumped okay that will even help you to test your understanding whether you understand this or not so thank you very much and our next video is going to be on the lagrangian interpolation so see you in the next video